In previous videos, we have looked at the conversion from a transfer function representation of a system to a number of standard or canonical state variable representations. One of these standard representations is the modal or Jordan canonical form. In this video, we look at the general modal canonical form and discuss its use. We have so far looked at three different types of systems and their corresponding modal canonical forms. Systems with only distinct real poles, systems with complex poles, and systems with repeated real poles. All of these systems have the same general form, where the A matrix, or capital lambda matrix, is in block diagonal form. By this we mean that there are a number of square blocks, lambda 1 to lambda m, arranged on the diagonal, and the rest of the entries in the matrix are zero. Each of the diagonal blocks correspond to either a distinct real pole, a complex pole pair, or a set of repeated real poles. If the block corresponds to a distinct real pole, it will only be a single element. If the block corresponds to a complex pole pair, its dimensions will be 2 by 2, and if it corresponds to n repeated poles, its dimensions will be n by n. The state vector is divided up into a number of smaller vectors that correspond to the diagonal blocks. The B vector and C vector are similarly divided into smaller vectors. We can now multiply out the state equation, which gives us a set of lower dimensional state equations corresponding to a set of lower dimensional state variable subsystems. We can define the output of the first subsystem as C times X1, and similarly for the other subsystems. The output of the full system is then given by the sum of the outputs of the subsystems plus beta 0 times U, which we can easily verify by looking at the output equation of the full system. We can draw the system as shown here. For the first subsystem, the dynamic is only determined by its states and input, and its output is only determined by its state. The same holds for the rest of the subsystems. The system output is the combination of the outputs of the subsystems, as well as the direct coupling between the input and the output. Since each subsystem is not influenced by anything that happens in the other subsystems, they are completely decoupled. We call these decoupled subsystems the modes of the system. What is the reason for looking at the modal canonical form? It might be very difficult to understand the dynamics of a high dimensional system if we only consider the full system. By converting the system to modal canonical form, we can view the system dynamics as the combination of the dynamics of decoupled modes. These modes are usually much simpler to understand than the full system, which could make our analysis of the system dynamics much simpler.